I've been gone for a little while. These last few weeks have been a little hard on me. After I learned that on his latest reincarnation attempt to save humanity, that the enlightened Buddha himself had recently died in an American prison cell, I got so mad that I just had to take a walk. I have no clue where I wandered off to or how I got there. All I know is that I owe an apology to someone out there for vandalizing their Logitech controller as I stumbled upon it in a blind rage. So whoever you are, know that I am truly sorry and hopefully my actions won't have any negative negative ramifications for you. But on the off chance that the owner of said controller happens to resurface, then know that I will do my absolute best to replace the controller with one that isn't completely shit. But enough about my personal life. What if, just for today, we let the intrusive thoughts win? What if we gave in to the pressures of being the best, but only in the most upstanding and objectively morally superior ways imaginable? What if we transcended both our humanity and basic sanitation levels to become the ultimate punishment upon those filthy non-believers who would dare to farm resources in what is rightfully our land. What I'm trying to say is, what if for once I played an MMO the way it was meant to be played and became a sadistic, murder-hungry animal with no regard for the feelings or considerations of others? So welcome to the second episode of Best in Slot and Albion Online, a top-down zone instance PvP enjoyer experience and the only potentially worthwhile MMO to ever crawl out of the third world nation known as Germany. Why do I consider them to be part of the third world because any country that treats words like kaleidoscope puzzle pieces keeps trying to force you to try their sausage and uses the French word for schlong to say please is obviously not developed enough to be called part of the first world but mostly because because I live in one so I would know to any of my German audience out there just please know I'm joking I love you guys the way you love your ovens but how do I know that Albion Online is the MMO to unleash my inner neck beard in the under six foot answer is I don't. I want to see exactly how much damage I, as a less than average player, can do to this game before I get smitten. Smote? erotically spanked out of existence by the player base. But first, a few constraints. I won't be using any third-party software while doing this. Sandbox Interactive, in their infinite wisdom, have strapped the performance-enhancing parasite known as Easy Anti-Cheat into their game in some vain hope of preventing people from running scripts, speed hacks, and whatever the fuck this is. And as you can see, it's working as intended. But I won't be using any of that. I am above such shameful behavior. I have morals. I'm better than that. Excuse me one second. Secondly, save for one time, I'm not gonna make any in-game purchases. Mostly because I'm a cheap bastard, but secondly, I despise all forms of pay to win. And finally, I won't be apologizing for any of my actions. If this video does end up upsetting you, then just know from the bottom of my heart, I don't care. But I will at least do you the favor of directing you towards some more appropriate content that you'll find in the description below. So let's get started at being a menace in Albion Online. Now, how exactly does anyone go about oiling up and thug shaking their way through an MMO they know little to nothing about? Well, the most important factor here is knowledge, because the difference between the average player and a good one is knowing not to stand in the fucking green stuff for the 12th time in a row during that telegraphed boss fight. But also, and brace yourself for this because this might come as a bit of a shock, knowing stuff in a video game makes doing stuff in a video game easier. And what this means is we need at least a basic understanding of Albion Online's mechanics. So let's get some hands-on experience first so we know exactly what kind of game we're dealing with here. Character creator, scuffed, just the way I like it. Graphics, crusty enough that you could probably run this game on an abacus if you tried. That's a mechanical calculator made of beads and rods for all you zoomies out there who have no idea what I'm talking about. We don't use them anymore. We repurpose the beads and rods for use on your mother. In game music and sound design. Actually, not bad. Blasting our way through the tutorial, Albion Online plays like League of Legends if League of Legends got out of its wheelchair after leaving rehab, launched itself directly into oncoming traffic, then got hit by the Path of Exile bus, but was scraped off the road with the Ultima Online shovel and kept on life support by Dark Age of Camelot. So it's not quite the same as similar experiences, but if you squint hard enough, you can tell that the game has just enough of the right elements to keep its player base coming back from 
for more. As my playtime continued, I began to notice a few very cool and super fun quirks baked into the Albion Online experience. Abilities are slow to fire off, usually have a cast time when you think they don't, and the global cooldown after ability use has you spamming buttons like you're trying to speed run your keyboard into retirement. I actually managed to do exactly that. RIP my $2 Redragon keyboard that I picked up three years ago. You lasted way longer than I expected you to. And God forbid you have to play this game on my levels of ping, because if you do, expect to not just be disconnected every five minutes, but also mocked for it. Now, most of the time hearing that there's a billion different abilities to try out is a good thing, but for my purposes, it makes life just that little bit harder. So what I need right now is a master, a Sith Lord, if you will, to a apprentice myself to, an artisan at the art of breaking open both the game and people's fragile little egos with nothing more than some basic in-game actions. We're going to be relying on the ass blasting master himself, Swole Benji. He's made a million videos on the game and I know he knows more than he's letting on. And as for his portfolio of upsetty spaghetti, Wait, did I just see Swole Benji? Bro, he's griefing the fucking game. That's why everyone fucking hates him, bro. Just like shit like this seconds me, man. Hey guys, it's Lupak back with another Albion Online video for you. And today we're going to find out how many hamsters can fit up Swole Benji's rectum. Got some Swole Benji? Well, he's doing what I'm gonna do now, okay? We're a yellow sun warrior right now. <laughs> yes, take me, God. <laughs> <laughs> they just killed. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, is this the real one? <laughs> Like all this fucking retards content is very fucking lousy, manipulative lies. So here you have your answer, you fucking retard. Aw, oh, are you shitting me? Some ganking little shit. Really? Oh, it's you. Wow, okay. Need I say more? You know, come to think of it, I'm also gonna need a character at the appropriate level, and we all know what that means. I need a character at max level because every modern MMORPG out there today treats the leveling experience like a tumor they're trying to get rid of. But now I'm digressing, and this is where things take a bit of a stranger turn than I expected. You see, Albion Online isn't like the other MMOs out there. She's different. Sure, she might have a few more chromosomes than you need floating around in the chat, but she's also missing a traditional leveling system. There's not really a traditional questing system strapped to this game either outside of some tutorial basics that are meant to teach you exactly how the game works. The best way I can think to describe Albion Online to you is as a pseudo sandbox MMO. You're told that you can do anything you want in this game. But as a solo player, only one or two things really matter. See, the day your character is shot out of that low poly character creator into the wide open world of wheelchair Diablo is as strong as they will ever get baseline. For everything else, there's an experience system called fame, different gear at different tier sets, and most importantly, money, both real and imagined. But what this all really means, at least for me, is that I already know what my two bottlenecks for this game are gonna be. And now we just need to find our way around them. So more importantly than anything else, I need a consistent way to generate solver that doesn't involve me taking out a mortgage on my kidneys in a Brazilian ice bath, or worse, getting a second job. There's a few ways we can go about solving this problem. The safe ones are gathering, crafting, or killing open world mobs in the safer areas where high level PVPers won't molest my well-shaven character's body. Farming open world content is only really good for fame since the silver return is garbage, so that's out the window once we've leveled our weapon. But as for crafting, I'd probably need to grind this game 16 hours a day for the next three years to get that right since those systems are not just reliant on fame, but surrendering your dignity and respective orifices to a massive guild who will turn you into their personal crafting slut. The only other option open to me would be spending real life money for materials, so that's not happening either. Which means gathering through the age old tradition of pillaging fresh animal corpses of their skin and serving a lifetime sentence 
competence of banging away at rocks is going to be the most consistent and straightforward moneymaker. Luckily, when Benji agreed to help me, he didn't just decide to be my master, but also my sugar daddy, my prison husband, if you will. He started me off with not just a decent gear set, but an entire enslaved grizzly bear to carry a stupid amount of resources, making life just that little bit easier. But even after all his help, gathering takes a stupid amount of time and is incredibly mind numbing. No, seriously, it makes me understand why all those factory workers jump out of windows as a form of stress relief. <laughs> Now, after helping me so much, you'd think that Benji would want something back in return for saving me literal months of my time. But what could we possibly provide a man that already has everything? Nothing more or less than a sweet, succulent pound of flesh to pound the flesh out of every now and then. Now, what I said probably didn't make much sense because I forgot to mention something. This game is full loot instanced world PvP in some of its zones. But that's enough explanation because I've got to get back to grinding. First order of business, getting our base weapon to an acceptable skill level on the wish.com version of the Path of Exile tree. Now Benji was nice enough to show me some of the objectively best farming areas where I'm not going to get destroyed. So hopefully this won't take too long. One eternity later. You know, I'm starting to get a little bit with how empty the PvE experiences are in Albion Online. I can see why they would make this available on a mobile device. Albion suffers from an ultra grindy gameplay experience and the illusion of combat being laid bare with nothing to hide behind. It's kind of like RuneScape but with less satisfaction and less automated systems to help you out along the way. But now that my weapon no longer hits like Will Smith hits his wife, which is obviously not hard enough, I can start on the other grind, gathering so I can make some bank. Now I know weapon farming took forever, but surely gathering isn't as bad. Much, much, much later. All right, this game is obviously not built to be benched on. There's a million pieces of gear to figure out and only a few very consistent ways to earn silver. This is probably the kind of game where you just log in every now and then, kill some time, play a little bit. But at its core, you start to realize that there is only the grind and nothing else. Want silver? Grind. Want to level up a weapon? Grind. Want to be able to do anything at all in this game to some level of proficiency? I mean, well, actually, you just kind of play the game, and as you do so without you really noticing, you kind of build up to the- Nope. Grind. Progression here in EverQuest's chunky little brother is just about the same as going onto TikTok and opening up the business section and asking any overdressed teenager who's standing next to a car that he doesn't own any question at all. Because the answer is always going to be the same scammy buy my online course line grind. In fact, with the way this game is set out, every time you accomplish something, you're going to see a little number next to whatever number you already earned, telling you that it's entirely your fault for not earning more of that number because you didn't give them money. And not only that, but Albion Online is ingenious with how you can give them money. A nice adventurer for five dollars? And regularly it would cost 35 to- I would be an idiot not to just give them my money. They've given you multiple ways to do so. You can pay for premium, which makes the grind a little bit shorter. Or if you don't like that method, you can buy silver directly through the indirect method of buying gold and then converting it into in-game currency. I mean, I'm not even mad, to be honest. It's pretty impressive to me how blunt Albion is about separating their players from their pennies. And for comparison, using pay-to-win systems are approximately 56 thousand percent more efficient. Why not more than that? Well, because when I was making the comparison between farming four hours a day, seven days a week to credit card swiping, I left my wallet in another room. So it took me a little over three minutes to find it, enter my details and lose an entire $20 for some on-screen pixels. Comparatively and for no reason at all, here's a list of full, complete and actually good games that you could pick up for that same $20 or less. Hashtag not sponsored. Hashtag I'm a brand risk. But enough of my ranting because now that we've single-handedly driven multiple species to extinction, mined enough natural resources out of the land that even best career would be jealous about these levels of free labor, and farmed enough fame so far to put all of Hollywood out of a job, we can start looking at what build we want to use. <sighs> Trash. Way too close range. 
Unfortunately, I'm playing Albion online, not American High School Simulator. When being a piece of shit to other players in a video game and looking for the right weapon, there's a few things to consider. First off is your ping. Mine in particular idles at a comfortable small-scale war crime, which means melee weapons are just not that viable. Anyone closer to the server than I am, which is everyone not playing from the South Pole, has a comfortable quarter of a second or more to react to anything I do, meaning that engaging in any form of ye old fisticuffs with any of my targets is just an outright bad idea. That leaves us with ranged combat, and within that ranged playstyle, we need to find what I like to call the Bill Cosby skill set. I need to be able to appear harmless enough to make the first move, lock my target in place, do as much damage as possible, both physical and psychological, and then hopefully run for my life before they realize what's going on or what I did to them. Huh, well this might work. Now is this likely to be the best gank build out there? No, but I figured this one out by myself. And honestly, I just feel like doing some wizard shit. And yes, before you say anything, guy who's been playing this game since before he could walk, I already know I should probably be wearing the minor boots and not these, but fuck leveling mining because I've already got to get back to grinding with my old gathering gear set so I can save up points to use on my new high tier gear through the auto respec function that lets you save up fame in exchange for your recurring state of poverty to use on other parts of the frisbee shaped talent tree. This game truly does operate on the same fair and balanced taxation rates of any western government. Want to be able to attack stuff and do damage? That's going to cost you some silver. Want to be able to gather? Silver please. Would you like to be able to do rich people things like uh, drink water and breathe, that'll be about 20% of your silver stack daily. So after literal millions of my hard earned silver or nothing more but a bitter memory again, and I'm no richer than your average Zimbabwean prince, I can gear myself out and start practice. And there's no better way to practice than doing the real thing and fucking it up until you get it right. Okay, after all of that, I think I finally figured out what buttons I need to press in what order. So, first objective, yellow zone. Priority targets, anyone not on a mount and not bright enough to have turned on their faction flag in Aladdin's hometown of Bridgewatch. Why Bridgewatch? When we've got this whole wide world of only five biomes to explore. Well, because Swal Banji told me to, and because unlike me, he knows what the fuck he's talking about. Look, even after all the work I've done to get here, I can't really call myself an Albion player. Okay, okay, hear me out. He wasn't a threat, but I needed the practice. That was actually the first time I managed to land a full combo on a player, and uh, wow. let me tell you, felt pretty good. Yellow zones are far more peaceful than I thought they'd be. There is not nearly the levels of open world PvP that I was expecting from the game that's just built that up everywhere that everyone comments about. I mean, maybe I got this wrong somewhere, but isn't this game built around the idea of sandbox PvP in the open world? Hear me out, this looks bad, but he was all the way out here gathering in non-gathering gear. Anyway, what I was really hoping to come out here and do was maybe like find two people in the middle of a fight, be able to burst into that and then ruin it for both of them. But to be honest, I'm just not seeing that anyway. Problem is, all I'm really finding out here is gatherers and people who are a little bit AFK. Maybe faction flagging is the way to go for PvP. So what then is the difference between faction PvP and normal PvP? Flagging up in flat PvP can be satisfying on a personal and emotional level, but doesn't really net you any gains. But when it comes to faction flagged PvP, once the rose tinted glasses leave your face, this is 
actually kind of fucking boring, really. You realize that all you're doing when attacking is roaming around, completing PvE objectives as a death ball until you come across another death ball from another faction and you end up disconnecting from the server at the most critical of moments. Defending is just about the same, except you have the advantage of catching their death ball off guard if you hit them at the right time while they're trying to take on your PvE objectives. Unfortunately, outside of that, there's just not that much going on. I mean, at least when it comes to normal ganking PvP, you get to pick and choose your targets and you're not funneled into doing what everyone else is doing. So it looks like my first choice was the right one, at least for what I'm looking for. And you know what? I think it's about time we hit a red zone. If I'm going to be murdering people, I might as well be taking their gear as well. To be honest, when entering a red zone for the first time, I was a little scared that I was throwing myself and my perfectly functional gear into the murder blender. But oh no, no, not at all. After only a few minutes, I already already felt like a fully functional lathe in a Chinese factory. Most of the harvestable resources in these zones are wandering around in tier 5 gear or lower. So if you can outclass or even match that, you're good to go. And it's not actually too different to the yellow zones except for the gear part. And funnily enough, I just haven't been ganked myself yet. Yeah, I kind of jinxed myself by saying that. Oh well, can't be too mad. I've definitely killed more than I've died. And if you're gonna learn to give, you gotta learn to get. And I got got. It should be fairly obvious from here that despite a few kills, I have little to no clue of what I'm doing when ganking. Sure, I've downed some people, but something's missing. I think it's about time we called in the expert who can show me how to do this properly. He demonstrated to me not just the art of the Albion gank, but how your actions can get you showered with compliments and praise by your fellow players for your efforts. And there's nothing quite like the feeling of watching the salt flow freely. But there's still one zone we haven't been to. A zone that we shouldn't go to. The black zone. Now going to a black zone as a solo or even duos player is generally considered a bad idea, but that's what we did anyway. And do you know what we found? Fucking nothing. These black zones are so boring and dull for a solo player. There is almost no reason for you to come here. If you're looking for a viable target to get your PvP on, you're going to be wandering around this place for a fucking eternity, looking for a player who's not surrounded by 300 other players from the same guild. And when you do finally find one of those rare unicorns out there, there's about a 50-50 chance one of their hideouts is nearby and they're going to run for safety the second they smell you entering the map. Zero out of 10, black zones are the dullest, most controlled and blandest experience this game has to offer if you're a solo player. Do you want to know what happens to small solo or duo groups out here in the black zones? You get swarmed, poisoned, dismounted, and molested. So there's not really a point in wasting your time here unless you're actively looking to lose all your gear for nothing. Yellow zones are a far more target-rich environment where more interesting kinds of fights tend to happen. And I haven't even mentioned the miss zones yet, which at their core are much like taking a trip to San Francisco. All you gotta do to get into a fight here is enter one of the many yellow piss circles scattered across the land and it's almost guaranteed that you're going to end up battling over whatever garbage has been left lying around. The one downside is that just like any fight with another homeless person you stumble across, you have no idea who the fuck they are. So no one's really going to care that you're being a menace to society. I'm not even going to make an excuse for this one. He knew the risks of coming here. Conclusion time. A lot of the PvP engagements I've had in Albion Online have most definitely been fair, balanced, and at least somewhat fun. So then why do I feel like something is still missing from this experience? And surely, Surely that has nothing to do with me completely ignoring every other system in this game, boosting my character as quickly as possible, and rushing to what can be considered the end game of Albion Online, all while ignoring anything that I might have found personally enjoyable outside of the PvP. But if I focus down on the neck-bearded experience that I came here to have, I wanted PvP, and it feels like my mom just told me on the car ride home that we have PvP at home. There's nothing really wrong with it, and Albion Online isn't that bad of a time waster, but it's just not that satisfying experience you would have gotten playing another MMO. But the question to my original objective still remains, did I manage to become a menace in Albion Online? Eh, kinda.
If I was to become a true boogeyman of the Albion community the way Swal Benji is, I'd have to spend years of my life here, cultivating and condensing the salted tears of the players around me. So I do know that at least the potential to do that exists. And every now and then I can imagine coming back here to blow off steam by blowing up a few of my fellow players and their gear. So where do I end up putting this game on my long and complete list of MMOs for my best in slot series? In its own category, Albion Online, even with me purposefully ruining the experience, rushing to the end game and trying to be a plague on the people around me, has proven to be at least good enough that I'm going to pick it up every now and then just to keep playing. Keep in mind, I wouldn't consider this game anything close to a masterpiece, but it does just enough of the right things to hold just enough of my interest every now and then. What's really keeping Albion Online going though is that it has a decent player population count and is a guided enough experience that even players who might not usually like the sandbox format might still find some value in trying this one out. On top of that, there's a lot of different directions you can take your character given enough time spent grinding your soul into dust. There's plenty of other systems that I didn't even touch, such as the crafting, the island system, the animal husbandry, farming, filling journals, world bosses, and if you can convince your children to grind this game for you, you can teach them a real world lesson about paying taxes. So I do know that there is way more in this game than what I've done in it so far. The game's biggest problems from what I can tell is that solo players have been nerfed over time in comparison to any form of group play. Taking even a cursory glance back at what this game used to be in comparison to what it is now, it seems that whenever solo players figure out some way to keep up with large guilds or clumps of players and it becomes common knowledge, Sandbox Interactive goes out of their way to nerf whatever advantage that may be. Is any of this fair at all? No, but neither is getting dismounted off of your mammoth in a yellow zone and being hit with the world's largest repair bill. Combat itself is also just not that juicy or impactful. A lot of the time, even in a fair fight, there doesn't seem to be much tension here. I'd equate this combat system to watching two Excel spreadsheet formulas in different cells fighting each other for dominance over who gets the right answer the fastest. But then I'd have to explain to the largely Asian player base of Albion Online that the Western devil requires technology to do math instead of just doing it in their head like a normal person. And final complaint, this game is heavily driven by meta. I honestly lucked out in the build I chose. There was actually a pretty good chance that I would have chosen a good weapon with good abilities that just didn't have the damage I needed. And it's pretty obvious that the rest of the game falls into the same meta trap. As your average Albion player, you may not realize this, but you are at the whims of whatever these German game developers decide to nerf or buff in their next patch. And we all know what happened the last time Germany got control of anything. Final verdict. Will I continue to be a menace in Albion Online in the future? Probably. But right now I ain't got the time for that because I got like four other videos I want to make and it's been well over a month since my last one. Yeah, it turns out having a full-time job sucks ass when all you want to do is make videos all day. But as always, big thank to all my subscribers, both <laughs> old and new. And on that point, we've hit the 10K mark. And as I promised in a video I made a long time ago, I'm going to be speedrunning a ban on Twitch, which I mean, honestly shouldn't be too hard considering how abusive they are with their power. So if you're interested in seeing how that ends up going down, follow me over there and also on Kick, where I'll be dual streaming. Just in case by pure happenstance, Twitch actually does their job and manages to ban me before I get through everything I want to do on that stream. But anyway, special thank to those online video enjoyers who were patient enough to not send bags of flaming human feces to my doorstep for not making a video last month. Your contribution to my ongoing survival is very much appreciated. Anyway, more content soon. Bye. Please don't fall apart when I touch you. Fuck. Okay, that sounds wrong. <gasps> no!